Hello, my name is Keshwani. It's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to improve our math skill. Today is our day number two. You and I are going to work together to hone our math skill to improve our to, to improve our math skill by doing a few problems together. These math problems are excellent preparation, whether you're preparing for GRE or GMAT or DSAT, it doesn't matter. These are, these are basic pro math problems that you should know how to solve. Today is our day number, day number two. Let's see what we have for today. Oh, pretty straightforward, simple question. What is the reciprocal of A minus 1 over B? Like I said, very straightforward, simple question. The question may be straightforward and simple. What we need to ask ourselves is, is the answer straightforward and simple? That will depend on you. So what I want you to do now is to pause the video and solve the problem yourself. And once you've done it, resume the video and then compare the work, okay? I'm going to be quiet for about 5-10 sec seconds. There we go. The very first thing we need to do, very first thing we need to do is to understand what reciprocal means. For example, reciprocal of five is one over five. Reciprocal of one over seven is seven. Reciprocal, reciprocal of three quarter is four third, and so forth. You see, one over seven becomes seven because seven is same as seven over one. One over seven becomes seven over one, which of course is seven. 5 becomes 1 over 5, 3 quarter becomes 4 third, and so forth. These are called reciprocals. What's the reciprocal of this quantity? Well, the very first thing we need to do is find out what the common denominator is. Here the denominator is B. What's the denominator of this guy here? The denominator of this guy is just 1. So what's the common denominator here? Common denominator would be B. For example, for example, if you have 3 minus 3 minus 1 over 5, the common denominator, 3 by itself is there, but it has a 1 underneath it. The common denominator here is 5. 5 times 3 is 15, minus 1 gives you 14 over 5, which makes perfect sense, which makes perfect sense because how many fifths in 1? Well, 1 is made up of 5 fifths, that's why it's called a fifth. 5 power, if something is divided divided up into 5 equal power, each of the equal power is called a fifth. So one whole thing is made up of 5 equal power, then it's called a fifth. 3 is made up of 15 fifths. As you can see, 3 is made up of 15 fifths. If it's made up of 15 fifths, and if you take away 1 fifth, it stands to reason that you should be left with 14 fifths. Because 15 fifth minus 1 fifth is 14 fifth. But anyway, this is how you will do it. You have to find the common denominator. The common denominator is 5 because this has a denominator of 1. Same exact thing is going on here. Here we have a denominator of 1. Here we have a denominator of B. The common denominator, technically speaking, is 1 times B, which is just B. So here, just like here, we took the 5 and multiplied by 3. We're going to have to take a B multiplied by A. We get A times B. A times B minus b divided by b is just 1, so here we get 1. So that's it, that's, 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 that's our answer. Or is it? It is not. We are not done yet. This is the most common error people will make in a, in a, in a haste, in, in haste rather, during the exam. They will end up picking this answer. This is going to be one of the answer choices. This is not the answer. This 
is like this. So if somebody asks you, the question is, if somebody asks you, if somebody asks you what is the what is the reciprocal of this quantity, 3 minus 1 fifth, the reciprocal of 3 minus 1 fifth, well, we know 3 minus 1 fifth equals 14 fifth, and therefore the reciprocal of 3, recipro reciprocal of this quantity is, the answer is, whatever this we found, the reciprocal of that quantity, 5 over 14. We have to take the reciprocal of this quantity because this quantity, 3 minus 1 fifth equals 14 fifth, and the reciprocal of 14 fifth is 5 over 14, and that's the answer because we're looking for the reciprocal of this quantity right here in the box. The same exact thing is going on here. This quantity in this box equals this, and therefore the reciprocal of this is b minus a minus b over 1, and that is our answer. Voila. That's it. That's all. Uh, you want to do one more? You feel like doing one more problem? Alright, let's do one more. You ask for it. Let's raise it then. Let's do one more problem. Or should we? Oh, what the hell. Let's just do one more. Very quickly, then, if you can tell me how much is this quantity? x squared times x cubed raised to the third power over x to the fifth. Very simple, very straightforward question appears in the exam all the time. Question like this can appear in the SAT, GRE, or GMAT. That's why I'm doing them. Because it doesn't matter which exam you're about to take, whether you're about to sit for the SAT or the GRE or GMAT, these math problems are excellent preparation to get you ready. Well, how much is this quantity? X cubed raised to the third. Well, a quantity raised to the third is same as A times A times A. Cube means that you take that quantity and multiply it by itself three times. Here, in the parentheses, what I have is X cubed. What we have here is A. Here we have x cubed, so this is the same as x cubed times x cubed times x cubed. Let's put that on the top. And x squared is just x times x, and x cubed times x cubed times x cubed over x to the fifth. I don't know how much detail I need to go into, but uh, uh, I'm not going to I'm not going to bore you to that. So. How much is, for example, how much is x squared? How much is x squared times x to the fifth? Well, x to the fifth means x squared means x times x, and then x to the fifth means x times x times x times x times x. We have seven x's here. So the rule is that we have to add the exponents when the quantities are being multiplied, as long as the base is the same. As long as this has a base of x and this has a base of x, as long as the base, base is same, and if the two quantities are being multiplied, then you add the exponents. So here we're going to add the exponents. This has the exponent of 1, this has the exponent of 1, 1 plus 1, 2, 9, so 11. 11, x to the 11, over x to the 5, and then here, in the division, we have to subtract it. x to the fifth over x to the cube is same as x times x times x times x times x over x times x times x. And you can see three x's will drop out. And we're left with x squared. And the quicker way is to simply subtract the exponents, 5 minus 3. There we have 11 minus 5. x to the six is our answer. That's it. That's what there was. I don't know why I had the need to do this particular problem. I wasn't planning on doing it. 
Anyway, I hope you found it helpful. If you wish to get hold of me for personal private tutoring for the SAT, GRE or GMAT, go to any of these website addresses and you can send me an email from there to get hold of me. Or you can go to kashwaniprep.com and you can get hold of me from there as well. Thank you.